So I asked my business math class to send me questions to have me like answer them as a way of like introducing myself to the class. So I'm gonna answer those questions right here and now. First question. What is your favorite game and why any console? I think I've got two answers. The first one is Pokemon Red. There's so many things that were, that were like really inspiring for me as far as like the art of that game. I love the way that the architecture looks um, and just just the, the concept of role-playing games in general. That was my very first role-playing game. So those things are all kind of combined together in my mind. Generally, I would say Pokemon has had the biggest influence on my life, although I don't really love those games anymore. They really fueled my imagination when I was young, and so I feel like I gotta give a shout out to Pokemon, especially Pokemon Red. The That was the first game I played from the series, and like the graphics and everything really grabbed me, and like even though I had no idea what I was doing in that game, I still had a ton of fun, and like I don't know, I played it for years and years and years. It's a great game. My other, more recent favorite video game is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, um, which it's also one of, I think, everyone's favorite video games. It's incredible. In general, I love the Legend of Zelda series because you get to go around the world exploring. Like, you'll find a new tool that lets you get through a new part of the map that you couldn't get through before. And so, like, it has this really cool sense of progress. And I don't really like the way that some games have, like, you have a level, and it's, like, this number represents how cool you are, how good you are. And Legend of Zelda doesn't have that. It's like over time, you get more and more cool stuff that lets you use new skills and you get stronger, but there's not numbers that's associated with it, which is something I never really liked about role-playing games that much. They felt too much like uh, it was about the numbers and the math and not enough about the story and like the experience. So Legend of Zelda has always done that really well. And Breath of the Wild is like, just the, the ultimate execution of that dream. The the way that the game controls, you can literally go anywhere. Like, it's amazing. And you can use physics and use science to explore and like to reach new heights and, and do things you didn't think were possible in the game. So it's it's a fantastic game. It's really like pushing the limits of what's possible. And it's great, you can play it in handheld mode too. So like, you know, comparing Pokemon Red, which was, you know, pixel based uh, graphics on like a really small square pixely screen to the switch portable mode like it's just so crazy how far graphics have come just during my lifetime and I'm not even that old like it's crazy and then also Legend of Zelda also kind of ties into my love for teaching and like education hopefully every year you have new skills and new tools um, and more hearts you know you're a little bit tougher so you can get through those obstacles that you couldn't get through as a younger or you know less experienced person. So it kind of it ties into school in a really interesting way as well. Not to be too nerdy about it. Next question. Uh, how many full-size golden retrievers do you think you could fight and win? Um, I don't know what context I would have to fight against a dog, but um, let's imagine that they're they're evil robots, and I have to defend you know my loved ones. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of kicking, and dogs have teeth, and they're already kind of low to the ground. Like being on all fours makes them a lot uh, more difficult to fight. So it's gonna be a little awkward. Like have you ever tried to punch a dog? It's <laughs> probably pretty awkward. Um, so let's say. I just keep thinking they're going to be biting my ankles and I'm going to be trying to kick them and I've only got two legs and I have to stand on one and there are so many things to worry about in this battle. So okay, let's quit talking about it and just answer it. I'll say three. Probably. <laughs> I don't really know how strong a golden retriever is. How about between three and six if it's a, a really good day or something. I mean, I don't know what kind of day it is where I'm fighting golden retrievers, but ugh. Uh, uh. Next question. Who is your favorite superhero? Just wondering. Um, my immediate instinct was to say Robin, but he or she is not a superhero really, just a hero with really good you know, flexibility and luck and uh, diligence. So I do really love Robin and all the Robins really, except for Jason Todd. But um, favorite superhero, I'm gonna say Dokken, who is Dark Wolverine. It's Wolverine's son. Um, he's he's a bad boy. He has tattoos. He has a mohawk. Um, he's also got the like the claws like Wolverine. He has two that come out here and then one that comes out here. And it's really cool. It looks much more like organic than Wolverine's uh, kind of claw look. 
And then also he can emit pheromones that manipulate people's emotions. So his storylines are often very complicated because there's not only the normal like uh, characters' emotions happening naturally as part of the plot, but he can also artificially manipulate those. So like if he needs to distract a guard, he can make this guard really, really angry at someone around him. And then that guard will go, you know, fight that person or yell at that person and he can like sneak by. So it's a very cool character. Like it's a very complex, um, really social kind of superpower that he has, which is pretty sweet. The next question says, can you Photoshop your dog into your favorite Pokemon? I hope so. Um, I think so. I'm picturing the Photoshop steps that that would take and I think I'm going to do it. So keep an eye out. What is your favorite kind of soup? Um, my wife would tell you this. I have very boring taste buds or a low standard for what I like in food. So one of my favorites is actually like split pea soup. Sounds really boring, looks pretty boring, but it tastes really good. I don't know. There's something about pea flavor that I love, especially the Imagine brand one. It comes in a box like, like this, like a black box at the grocery store. Um, that's probably my favorite. I know it's kind of boring, but I do love that. Um, also, vegan broccoli cheddar soup can be pretty sweet. Uh, we got an Instant Pot for Christmas, which is like a electric pressure cooker, and you can make really cool soups in that. So I'm excited to keep exploring these new soup frontiers this year. And the next question is, how is your day going? It's going awesome. The weather's crazy, but you know, keeping it real inside, it's good. Next question says, have you ever fallen in public? Yes, I have fallen in public. I rode a skateboard for many years of my life. I've done some really nasty wipeouts in front of people. It's not a good feeling, but um, I don't know. It makes you feel more alive in a way. Like when you fall down and skin your knees, you're like, I really lived today. You know, I have marks to prove it. Like I also have this weird thing about I like to kind of have some sort of injury all the time. Um, I don't know. Again, it kind of makes me feel more alive. Like I remember that time. I have uh, closer memories with things that were kind of painful in a way. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this movie. I had a sprained wrist at the time. Like, I remember that. It kind of makes um, your memories connected more to your, like, body, which is kind of weird. Or maybe that's it. Maybe it's a time when you feel more in tune with your body. Guys, it's weird. We're brains, right? Are we brains? Are we souls? What is a human? Huh. Um, the next question is, uh, how old were you when you watched your first scary movie? And, um, the first one I can remember was Young Frankenstein, which is like a comedy. Like it's, it's basically a spoof of, uh, Frankenstein movies. But when I was a kid, it just scared me really, really bad. So I was probably like seven or eight when I saw that. And it's not a scary movie, but I thought it was really scary at the time. What product was the first to appear in a UK TV commercial in 1955? I have no idea, but I'm going to guess it was something kitchen related. Let's see. It's tingling fresh. It's fresh as ice. It's Gibbs SR toothpaste. The tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good too. Does this world deserve dogs? This is a great question. I don't know if the world does, but I do think that humans do. I think that there's some kind of companionship between a dog and a human that goes really, really nicely. Um, to tie back into the very first question, there's this weird connection that I always wanted to have with Pokemon. Like, uh, you know, some people make like a New Year's wish. When it was the new millennium, you know, the year 2000, the year the world was going to end and everything, my wish was, I wish Pokemon were real. <laughs> um, it didn't come true, but 16 or 17 years later, when I met my dog, Emmy, who's in the other room right now, um, it was like, this is kind of what I always wanted to get out of having a Pokemon. Like, you have this bond with something that, that can't speak English, so you kind of connect on like a deeper level, in a way, um, or a more basic level. It also is kind of like why I always love like Animal Crossing or um, digital pets. Like there's some cool connection about helping to take care of something and helping to raise something that's not human. Um, I don't know. It makes you feel more in tune with, with just nature in general. It's, it's really cool. Um, we've bonded really well, Emmy and I. It's been a good time. 
So I don't know if everyone in the world deserves dogs, but I think in general, this world does deserve dogs. They are amazing. But humans can be amazing too sometimes, right? Huh? Cool. Looks like we're out of questions. Uh, that was fun. Never done that before, but maybe I'll do it again. Hey, who knows? It's more fun than just like going through a slideshow of my pictures or whatever. Like, hey, this is who I am. Here's some pictures. I don't know. This is more interactive, right? Students wrote those questions. Real genuine students. See you later. See you in class.